about solving series and parallel circuits to estimate the equivalent values of resistance, inductance, and capacitance. In general, to solve any series or parallel circuit, it is essential to estimate the equivalent values of R, L, and C components. So all these things comes under the passive component category. And this tabulation has given us the equivalent resistance, capacitance, and inductance for series and parallel connection separately. And here it is all for the general rule where n number of resistors or capacitors or inductors are connected. So the same can be extended or applied to any of the problem or a real-time circuit analysis issue. So now let us solve some more problems to understand the equivalent values of RL and C. Here is our first problem for discussion where the circuit is a combination of all series and parallel combination of resistors completely where we need to find out the equivalent resistance between the two nodes A and B for the circuit that is shown here. Now let us analyze here which two resistors are connected in series or in parallel. So here we can observe that from R7 and R8 connection that these two resistors are connected in parallel and similarly R5, R6, R9, R10 are connected in parallel and we can see here R1, R2 are connected in series, R3, R4 are connected in series but these two R1, R2 is parallel with R3, R4. So if we try to solve all these things then we can definitely get an equivalent resistance value by looking into the nodes A and B. To solve this particular circuit, let us start with R7, R8. Let me just rewrite this as R7, 8, where R7 is in parallel with R8. So the equivalent resistance value or the formula for the parallel connection will be 1 by 1 by R7 plus 1 by R8. So this we can rewrite it as simply R7, R8 divided by R7 plus R8. Now we have the values for R7 which is 200 ohms into R8 which is 40 ohms divided by 200 plus 40 that will give us 240 ohms. So this is nothing but 33.33 ohms if we saw. Similarly we have R5, R6 which are in parallel. Therefore R5, R6 can be straight away written as 45 into 100 because it is R5, R6 divided by R5 plus R6. So this will be 145. This is going to give us 31.03 ohms. Now R9, R10 is also in parallel which each are 65 ohms. So I've just calculated the equivalent resistance of R9, R2 which are parallelly connected. So that is 32.5 ohms. Now if you look at this end of the circuit, so this complete end we have solved and this equivalent capacitance, this one and this one, all the three equivalent capacitance we have estimated. So now it is looking similar to three resistors that are connected in series. So this is R5, R6. This is R7, R8, the equivalent values. This is R9, R10. Take sum of all the three that will give us the equivalent resistance for this one. Let us as of now keep that as RS1, series equivalent resistance 1. So then the value will become as RS1, which is equal to addition of 33.33 ohms plus 31.03 plus 32.5 ohms which is going to give us 96.86 ohms. Now, for the rest of the circuit, which we have here, we need to find out. And here, it is very simple. R1, R2 are connected in series. Similarly, R3, R4 are connected in series. Solve each of them separately and then take a parallel combination. The equivalent values for these two series connections are given here as 97 ohms and 83 ohms. Now, R1, R2 is in parallel with R3, R4 that we need to solve. 
Now, after finding that parallel connection between R12 and R34, the equivalent resistance value is 44.73 ohms. And now the circuit would be reduced to one parallel connection of resistor with 44.73 ohms and 96.86 ohms. So again, if we apply the parallel rule for calculating the equivalent resistance, then this becomes RAB equal to 44.73 into 96.86 divided by 44.73 plus 96.86 ohms, which is equal to, if you solve, you'll be getting 30.6 ohms, which is the final answer of RAB, the equivalent resistance while looking into the nodes A and B. So this is how you solve and estimate the equivalent resistance for the given circuit. Now we will move on for the next problem where we need to find out the equivalent inductance looking into the terminals for the circuit shown below. The terminals here are marked with A and B and here we have few inductors that are connected in parallel and I think finally there will be some series connection of inductors also. We also know the general formula for calculating the equivalent inductance when they are connected in series and parallel. So now let us straight away go for the solution of this particular kind of circuit. The same circuit I have given here also. So now our objective is to find out the equivalent inductance between these two terminals A and B. And here we can see L1, L2 they are connected in parallel. And I have applied the equivalent inductance formula when they are connected in parallel. So it is 40 into 40 divided by 40 plus 40. Because inductance equivalent value is also going to be much similar to the resistance equivalent value. So same formula I have applied here for L1, L2 because they both are connected in parallel. And similarly, you can see here L3, L4 is also connected in parallel. L5, L6 in parallel. L5, L7, L8, they are also in parallel. And all the equivalent values I have found out here. Now, after solving all those things and substituting the equivalent values in the circuit, the circuit is reduced to this form where you can see only four inductors, but you need to find out the equivalent inductance value across the terminals A and B. So here you can see that this 50 millihenry and 20 millihenry inductors are connected in series and this 20 millihenry and 100 millihenry inductors are connected in series and therefore, these two are connected in series, these two are connected in series, and finally there will be one parallel connection. So writing the equivalent value for the series connection of inductors is very simple. So this one will give us 50 plus 20, 70 millihenry, and this one was going to give us 100 plus 20, 120 millihenry. So now actually this circuit will look similar to, this is going to be our node A, and here I will have one inductor and at this end I have one more inductor and at this node we have B. So this one is 70 millihenry and this one is 120 millihenry and these both are connected in parallel. So the equivalent inductance across the node AB is nothing but 120 millihenry in parallel with 70 millihenry. So again, do the equivalent inductance calculation. 120 into 70 divided by 190. So that is going to give us LABS 44.21 millihenry. This is going to be the equivalent inductance for the circuit that we have considered. Here is another problem where we have combination of resistor, inductor and capacitor. So now we need to find out VC which is the voltage across this capacitance and IL which is the current through this inductor and the energy stored in the capacitor and in the inductor in the circuit that is shown here for DC conditions. So this statement is very important. So now let us solve this particular problem. So under DC condition we need to understand that the inductor can be treated as a short circuit, but the capacitor will be treated as an open circuit because under DC condition, the capacitor will block DC. It will allow only the AC signals. So this one will be an open circuit and this will be a short circuit. So therefore, you can 
easily imagine that these two resistors are connected in parallel which means r1 r2 are in parallel therefore we can write the equivalent resistance r12 as r1 parallel with r2 and all the values i have kept it as 6 ohms it is 6 into 6 divided by 6 plus 6 which is 12 therefore this is going to be 3 ohms now the current that we need to understand through the inductor so before that let us understand what is the total current that is flowing through the circuit so that is given as i1 equal to 10 amps so therefore we can easily find out what is the voltage total voltage for the circuit that is according to ohms law i into r and here we have the equivalent r12 resistance i is given in the question itself as 10 amps into 3 ohms which is 30 volts is the total voltage now the same 30 volts only will be reflected here because this is considered as an open circuit under the dc condition therefore my vc the charge across the voltage across that particular capacitance vc is also going to be v equal to 30 volts now let us find out what is the current through the inductor so now to find out the current through the inductor this current will flow across this inductor and only through this resistance r2 where this inductor under dc conditions we have assumed that to be a or we have treated that to be a short circuit so therefore current il will now flow only through the resistance r2 which is equal to 6 ohms therefore il is going to be v which is 30 volts divided by r which is 6 ohms which is equal to 5 amperes as the current through the inductor now we need to find out finally the charge that is stored in the capacitor and in the inductor so that we know the formula for the capacitor the energy stored formula will be wc equal to 1 by 2 capacitance and voltage across the capacitance so now we have the capacitance value as 6 farad into vc was 30 volts the whole square is giving us 2700 joules because energy we represent it in the form of joules now for the inductor the formula will vary as wl equal to 1 by 2 l which is the inductance and il is the current through the inductor the whole square so substitute the corresponding values that will give us the energy stored across the inductor as 75 joules hope this video was useful for you all to solve any series and parallel circuits which has combinations of r l and c and we have also understood how to calculate the equivalent resistance inductance and capacitance value and we have also solved three different problems understand about the equivalent values of r l and c catch you all with another interesting video until then stay safe Thanks for watching this video through Electronics Insight channel.